Thomas Chapin. He was on that stage playing 110%, and he just couldn't stop. He had no off button. What a player, wow. Plick can play with speed, incredible dexterity, incredible harmonic knowledge. This unbelievable energy. It was like a dance in a way. It almost looked like a dance sometimes. He is one of the last great creators in the music who actually was moving the needle, was moving the music forward. He had a deep understanding and appreciation of the history of jazz. He bridged the gap between today's world and the old swing dance. When I heard Thomas perform, he just was an expressive guy. He, and he was an artist. He looked like an artist. He acted like an artist. He was part of the, the fabric of New York. In New York, during Thomas's time, there were two different camps of music, and people had an idea and an attitude about what music was. They worked really hard to define it. I felt that Thomas was the centerpiece of all of that. By 90, we were, we were starting to flow and hitting Europe. His girlfriend called me up and told me the news that he had leukemia. It was a powerful thing for somebody to get out of bed, knowing they were about to die. And he played. I put his CDs on just because I'm in the mood and people come up to me and they go, who is that? And I say, that's Thomas Chapin. They go, who is that guy? His music still touches people. And a great musician, a musician who holds all sorts of promise, is cut down in his prime. That's an unfinished story. And we want to know as much as we can about where that music was heading, what that man was like, and what might have happened. Thank you.